Most conspiracy theories are relatively harmless. The shape of the earth or whether or not there was a worldwide mud flood isn't going to do too much harm. However, there is one conspiracy theory out there that is particularly dangerous, one in which I think needs addressing once and for all. I am of course talking about the anti-vaxxers. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin for Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Mac Weldon. When it comes to men's essential brands, you can't get much better than Mac Weldon. They believe in smart design, premium fabrics and simple shopping. They are the essential premiums brand. Socks, shirts, hoodies, underwear, polos or active shorts. Mac Weldon promises comfort and a consistent fit. They use a wide range of customised fabrics that can keep up with you no matter what your day brings. Like these silver or dry knit t-shirts, much like this one which I purchased. I have to say though, my favourite thing is still the underwear. Immensely comfortable. But look, we are all finally starting to get outside again to see friends and family, but springtime for me is a nightmare. I get horrendous hay fever. At least I can be comfortable in my clothes and look stylish with Mac Weldon, whilst my face is a total mess. They also have a totally free loyalty program called Weldon Blue. Level one gets you free shipping for life, and once you reach level two by spending $200, you get 20% off every single order you make in the next year. For 20% off your first order, visit macweldon.com slash simandan and enter the promo code SIMANDAN. Right, back to today's video where I'm gonna do this slightly different to my normal style of videos. You may remember a while ago, I posted a video entitled The Truth About 5G, where I dispelled a lot of the myths surrounding it. If you've been unlucky enough to break a bone and have needed an X-ray, you'll have experienced light waves that can fully penetrate your body. That's because the waves used for X-rays are so small, with a wavelength of 0.1 nanometers. A nanometer, by the way, is one billionth of a meter. X-rays and gamma rays are the only light waves in the electromagnetic spectrum that can fully penetrate your body. Microwaves are absorbed by the first centimeter of your skin, but because of the extreme low power of the mobile phone networks, then no damage occurs. Check that one out here if you haven't seen it already. Today, I'm gonna to do roughly the same thing uh, regarding the anti-vax videos but it's likely gonna be a series of videos because we're gonna tackle each argument independently. And in this first one, we're gonna focus on everything that goes into a vaccine. So this is the truth about that. Anti-vaxxers are always going on about how bad the ingredients in vaccines are for you without really doing any evidence on the topic. They speak of mercury and aluminium as well as other substances as well. So let's take a look at that and see exactly what is in vaccines. Now, normally a vaccine will contain the antigens from the disease you're trying to immunize against and adjuvant, which is to enhance the body's immune response, as well as some preservatives and some stabilizers as well. First off, we're gonna look at thimerosal, which is a form of ethyl mercury. Thimerosal is used as a preservative in vaccines, which are crucial at preventing bacteria or fungi infection. Now, thimerosal is only about 49% mercury by mass, and it's a type of mercury that can be uh, absorbed, broken down, and excreted by the body fairly easily. It is very different to the form of mercury that can be found in fish with minimata poisoning. As a precaution, however, pretty much all vaccines now no longer contain thimerosal, and you can get some thimerosal-free alternatives as well. Next up, we're gonna turn our attention to formaldehyde, which has been used for decades in vaccines to inactivate viruses and detoxify bacterial toxins, ensuring they don't result in sickness when injected. Now, whilst formaldehyde has been found to be slightly carcinogenic, the amount of harm it does purely depends on the amount given. The average amount of formaldehyde in a vaccine is about 0.2 milligrams per dose. Now, to put that into context, a newborn baby has about 1.1 milligrams in circulation around its body, and there's more formaldehyde in an apple than the hepatitis B, diphtheria, and polio vaccines put together. Next up is aluminium, which is used as an adjuvant in vaccines to help the immune system respond. Aluminium, of course, is the third most common naturally occurring element on Earth after oxygen 
and silicon. A breastfed infant will naturally digest around seven milligrams of aluminium through its diet in the first six months of its life. In contrast, the standard vaccines that are administered in the first six months of a child's life contain only about 4.4 milligrams of aluminium. Aluminium has been used safely for over six decades in vaccines and there is no scientific evidence to suggest otherwise. Claiming that there are things like aluminium and mercury in your vaccines uh, and that it is harmful to us is very similar to saying something like, there's lots of chlorine in that salt right there, don't eat it. Chemically speaking, there is chlorine in salt, yes. However, it's bonding with another element to form a substance that is pretty much harmless to us. Now, gelatin is also found in vaccines and is used as a preservative and stabilizer. And technically speaking, this is the most dangerous ingredient because the potential for allergic reaction. However, this risk is still extremely small with around one case of anaphylaxia found per two million doses. Monosodium glutamate or MSG is another preservative and stabilizer used in vaccines. After getting some bad press in the 60s, MSG is now found to be completely safe, despite the fact that a very, very small amount of people will get some pretty short-term reactions. Finally, I just want to touch on the mRNA vaccines, which the anti-vaxxers are wheeling out as DNA altering. It's come to the forefront a bit because one of the COVID vaccines uses this technique. Most vaccines work by introducing some weakened or inactive part of the disease in order to trigger an immune response, but mRNA vaccines are different. Instead, they teach certain cells in our body to make proteins which trigger this immune response by the body. There is a slight difference, but after that, the process is very similar to normal vaccines. So as you can see, there is nothing in a vaccine that can harm us, and they are rigorously tested. And of course, there are some side effects to vaccines for some people, but they are very, 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 very rare. And the reward of the vaccination program far outweighs the risk. And I have to say, in my very humble opinion, the response to the COVID situation, the vaccine response to the COVID situation, is without doubt one of humanity's greatest achievements. Right, there we go, another Tinfoil Tuesday all done and dusted. Please, please do share this video as far and wide as possible. It needs to be seen by everyone. We need to stop those anti-vaxxers in their tracks. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. Just enough time to once again thank Mac Weldon for sponsoring today. Remember, if you want 20% off your first order, visit macweldon.com slash simandan and use the promo code simandan. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you all on Friday for Flat Earth Fail Compilation 24. See you then. Matt Peel has a giant inflatable banana in his backyard, which he calls Dr. Peel.